Hello, hello, and welcome to episode 181 on the Everyday Joy podcast. I'm your host, Joy Ravella, and my goodness, uh, if you haven't already, do check out the bonus episode that dropped uh, not too long ago with Alex Cook, who is the founder of this incredible ministry here in Australia called Wealth with Purpose, and it's all about giving you a sense of freedom around money. And if you haven't listened to it, it's an hour-long conversation conversation where we talk about all sorts of things around what was Jesus's stance on money, what's uh, the Bible sort of, what does the Bible say about debt, um, and how do we handle disagreements in the marriage as a result of money, because that's a huge stressor. In fact, the number one uh, reason a lot of people um, go through divorce comes down to financial reasons. So have a listen to that episode. It's an hour long, grab a cuppa, do some painting on the side or some gardening or go for a walk. It's just a great encouraging one. It really is a warm, hot drink to have. It's such, such a, such a delightfully and unexpectedly freeing conversation I had with him. Right now, though, uh, let's get into today's episode with Gig, and I really do feel like today's conversation ties in so beautifully with that bonus episode. Let's get into it. Mercy to the needy is like a loan to God, and God pays back those loans in full. This is found in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 17 of the Message Bible. Today we are taking a look at mercy and loans and lots of stuff in between. And I've got Gig unpacking this verse with me today. Gig, so good to have you. Oh, I love being back here. I've got to say, Joy, my time in... My head at the moment is just so scrambled and there's a lot going on. Spring's coming in, the change in the season, and there's a lot going on at home and with things and my brain is full. So to come and step into here and just unpack stuff, it's a little bit like therapy. So thanks Mm. for having me back. Well, thank you for for being... Just before we dive into that verse, um, a lot of people will be listening and they're going to feel the same way you're feeling, Mm. kind of scrambled, a little bit all over the place. You could have said no to coming in. You could have said, "Look, I've, you could have." You could I've have. had three hours sleep. I'm my, you know, when your brain's so foggy, it's yeah. almost like a hangover fog. Yeah. And I've been there for like five days. And um, you know, when I sat down and did my notes and reflected in this and got into the word, I just felt a release. So I thought, I'm just going to come in and go with it because God will always meet me where I'm at. Yeah. So. So yeah. good. And and here we are. And here we are. Here we are. <laughs> Something already for you to take away if you're, if you're listening to that and you're feeling the same way. So, Gig, what are your first impressions of this? When I'll read the verse again. Yep. Mercy to the needy is like a loan to God and God pays back those loans in full. full. Yeah. This verse always makes me think of rewards points, like Willie's points. Um, the more you buy, the more points you get, like flybys, but better. Although we don't enter kindness wanting something in return, but there is a certain buzz that comes with giving kindness and mercy to those that really need it. Mm. Yep, and that's the thing. I think you never know how much that mercy or that kindness will mean to someone. Yep. I think when we look at things through our own hurt, our own perspective, um, we can be a bit stingy with mercy and forgiveness, but yep. the moment you put ourselves in their shoes, mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like, wow. I actually have a real opportunity to impact their life. And we can't change the world, but sometimes we can change the world for that one person by doing the most tiniest. It might be a comment. It might be a lend. It might be a give. It might be an encouragement. And that will change their world. Mm. How is this verse um, described or shown you something about what matters to God or what his character is about? Yeah. It just shows us that God has a plan on how we should all live together. Um, This sort of verse pops up many times and it uses different words, done to the least, unto the children and so on. And I really believe that everyone in this world needs needs to have their needs met and we can all have our needs met by each other every single one of us and it it frustrates me how much hunger and homelessness there is in this world when God has given us the means for everyone Mm. Um, but because of you know societies worlds governments countries power greed whatever it is people's needs aren't being met but if we all can meet those little needs in each other's lives um, wow what a world we could live in yeah I think I read somewhere that if 10% of the world's richest Mm. gave away 10% of their wealth to the 90% no one would be homeless yeah and no one would be left without and you and I are 1% of the richest yeah 
That's right. If you have a roof over your head, yep. clothes on your back, what yep. was the last thing? And uh, $10 either in your pocket or your, your bank account or somewhere. You're in the 1%. You're in the 1%. Yeah. And also we are 5% of the, um, the world that have hot running water. Mm. 5%. We have so much to give. We do. We do. And giving is one of the best ways, I think, to experience, that's the word, to experience God in such a powerful way. God at his heart is a giving, giving, generous father. And when we give, we can experience him in a way that is unlike any other way you can experience him because you're literally tapping into the core of who he is. And we can see that in this verse as well. God pays back those loans in full. Um, Mercy to the needy is like a loan to God. God is, he values it when we show mercy and Mm. kindness and generosity to others. And it's this beautiful way, I think, of, you know, when you when you have someone that you love, and okay, I'll use Ari as an example. <laughs> <laughs> so Ari loves miniatures and he loves painting those little figurines. Awesome. I'm not into that at all. I find it frustrating. It takes hours and hours and hours patience, to do this. Patience. I'm not a patient person. <laughs> but um, I know that one of the things he loves doing is putting those figurines on some sort of wooden base. And yep. so he, he buys some MDF wood and he cuts out these circles and he's sanding them away. And one day I was at an op shop and I saw, I think, these wooden buttons that were very flat. And they just had one hole in the middle. Wow. And I thought, oh, these are the perfect size and dimension for Ari. And so I thought, oh, I wonder if it would be something that he'd enjoy. And I thought, well, I'll get it anyway. Mm. It was only a dollar. So I uh, came home and I gave it to him. And the way his eyes lit up. Yes. Because it was me showing interest in something that he was interested Mm. in. I mean, yes, he was excited about the fact that I got him something cool. But I think it was the thought that went behind it. It was the fact that I knew enough about his interest to be able to give him something that he would enjoy and I think this verse is a way that you can say to God I love you and I'm tapping into something that you also love and care about I also think that it's genetically ingrained in us to give because it is quite often a lot easier to give than to receive to receive something it's it can be quite emotional and can be quite awkward Mm. Um, but for me I find giving the biggest buzz and so much easier. I can give you the world, but if you try and give it to me, sometimes the, my walls go up. Yeah. So I think it's genetically in us that we are givers. Mm. Definitely. Yeah. So maybe for you, if you're having a difficult day and stuff's going on, as um, <laughs> as contrary as this sounds, give someone something today. If all you can give is encouragement, give something today. And I think you'd be amazed at how that... Um, refreshes and heals you. Mm. And it can be a complete stranger, which I find even more powerful. Yeah. Because you don't know anything about that person. Mm-hmm. And if you feel something in your spirit just to say, you look fabulous today, your dress really suits you. Wow. That's it. You have no idea yep. what impact that would have. So, Gig, how has this verse come alive in your world? <laughs> Joy, all you got to do is come to my house and it is in every single room. Uh-huh. My r- house is filled with things that I have been gifted and given um, because just people have loved me and they've given me things. Now, I give away, I will give away money, TV, I will give you my time. I have done amazing things in other people's lives and it's been a little bit of a burden and a little bit of a season for me, but I've always got there and done what I've needed to do for that person because I really feel God has said, this person just needs you. They absolutely need you at this point. I've spent my last $40 buying groceries for someone, for a single mum. Next day, God turned around and blessed me with more money. Mm. It was just, there's always, yeah. So my home is is this verse. There's so much free furniture in my house. And I'm not talking rubbish. I'm not talking, I'm talking antiques. Mm. I'm talking beautiful pieces that have come from all around the world. Um, because I've given so much away and I mean God repays that loan in different ways and he will give back to you in your life whatever is needed it may not be you know a piece of furniture for a piece of furniture Um, God knows your need he knows that person's need that you've given to so you just trust listen to your heart and remember one day you're going to leave this world and you cannot take that stuff with you
Proverbs 19, 17, mercy to the needy is like a loan to God and God pays back those loans in full. I love what Gig said earlier. She talked about the fact that while we can't change the whole world, but we can change one person's entire world through our act of generosity. Whether it's mercy, whether it's forgiveness, whether it's giving of something, there's so many ways in which we have the opportunity to impact someone else's life. I also love how Gig said that her entire house is made up of beautiful things that were given to her. And I just think, wow, what a beautiful image to look around at your home and say to yourself, yes, this house is adorned with generosity and signs of God's goodness and God's love. You know, we've actually got a very similar story. A lot of the things that I have, we have in our home come from people giving them to us or things were found on marketplace things were found at op shops and both of us um, have just been so blessed by by people's generosity and people just giving things to us and they always happen to be things that are given at the exact time and I'm so grateful to have uh, that in my life and we're really just wanting to somehow give that back to someone else and I believe that's another thing Gig said, that we are designed to give and that's the application I want to focus on today because I believe when we tap into the things that our God loves and cares about, we tap into a deeper relationship with Him. It's all well and good to go to church, to listen to this podcast, to read the Bible, to pray. All of these things are really, really, really good. But there is nothing like generosity. There is nothing like that moment where you tap into the vein of who God is and you say, Lord, use me. My resources are yours. My time is yours. What would you have me do today? And wow, just see how God uses you. Just see how much deeper you can grow in your relationship with him. It really is a powerful way to step into a new level. We were designed to give because we are designed in the image of a giving God. And if you've got some more questions about this and you want to understand how all of this comes together, that bonus episode is a super deep dive into finances, money and generosity at the heart of it all. It's such a great episode. Hope you enjoyed today's chat. Go on over to the Everyday Joy Facebook community to dive deeper into this conversation. And I look forward to catching up again tomorrow. Tomorrow.